Good evening and welcome to this night's edition of The Conversation Never Ends. Hello. Did you know that the conversation never ends? I bet you didn't think it did. No, you did. But you didn't. Did you? Did you? Mark, how are you tonight? Perfect. Perfect? You look perfect. You look absolutely perfect. But I have a question for you. Uh oh. How's your context tonight? My context? Your context. I have a context? Do you have a context? Hmm. Yeah. Lively. Lively. A lively context. Is your, your context okay? Everybody's context okay? How's your context, Robert? Good. You have a context tonight? Good. good context? Good. Let me ask you a more difficult question. Your, uh, your auto police is. Is it all right? <laughs> Mainly. Mainly okay. Mainly okay. Tom? Autopoiesis, in good shape? In good shape. In good shape? <laughs> yeah, being maintained. Good. Good. Anybody else want to come forward about their autopoiesis? Don't be shy. It's okay. Your autopoiesis okay? You don't even know what it is. I guess. You guess. <laughs> guess. Guessing is good. We like guessing. Good. <laughs> this evening's program starts with the parable of Luigi's Pizza. Now imagine, or run, imagine, that you come to Detroit, where I happen to be living right now, and you say, Paul, where do they have good pizza? And I say, Arun, I have just the place for you. Luigi's, it's right across the street. Now imagine, Arun, that you then say, well, Paul, why Luigi's? Why should I, Arun, go to Luigi's? And imagine, Arun, if I say, fuck you, I'm never going to tell you. <laughs> Note, I just described Google. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I? Yes. Didn't I just describe Google? He's right. Yes. This is what I call, and hence the title of the piece this evening, Worlds Without Conversation. Because, of course, you can't say to Google, great idea, why? Why can't you say it? Why doesn't Google say, well, we're wrong. it's a great idea because they're Gluten-free, nothing like it. Google doesn't have the requisite variety. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it doesn't have the requisite variety. I'm not sure that's true. I think it has a lot of variety. And it just doesn't want you to know the variety that it's using to make a choice for you. Because its choice is not for you, its choice is for it. I was going to say, Google doesn't help you ask a question. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's my next card. <laughs> what does Google serve up? What does it serve up? You put in a keyword and what does it give you back? Links. Links? And why does it think that's useful? Information. Information. It thinks it's giving you information. That's right. It thinks it's giving you an answer to your query, your keyword query. <coughs> right. But the problem with answers, you know what the problem with answers are? This is a very, very serious problem with answers. I'm going to tell you, I know you might be shocked. Please don't leave feeling too badly about it. Answers are dead. Answers are about the past. Google is using the history of what it knows about everyone and the history of what it knows about you to give you what it thinks is a good answer for you but the answer is dead. Why? Because it's based on the past. I'm here now. Answer my question about the now. Don't give me an answer that's about who I was. Give me an answer in the now. So questions are alive. Questions are of the now. Answers are dead. Tom doesn't think answers are dead. How many of Google's users are alive? That doesn't matter because it's all about their past. No. It's not about no. their presence. No. Sure. So this, these milliseconds between the time that I had my question and the time it gives me its answer based on this history of death and deadness, right? I can become who I wish to become. Actually, I don't know who I can wish to become because I want the variety of the system, the variety of this conversation, which is not a conversation yet, to tell me something or offer me something that I don't already have. 
So could we have a conversation with Google, much like perhaps this conversation might be, which increases my variety, I hope, and I hope it also increases your variety. This is what my goal would be. Not averaging on big data, not averaging on some dead history, but on what's possible now between us in real time. What I really want, thank you, Mr. Mann, is I want a question engine. I want an engine that gives me questions, not an engine that gives me answers, particularly because answers to dead questions are a lot. So could we have a question engine? I believe we can. I would like to build one. Shall I start a Kickstarter campaign? What would you give? <laughs> would you give 50? Would you give 100? 100, I hear 100, I hear 100, 100, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 50. <laughs> would you donate to such a thing? What would you get in return? A signed t-shirt? A better future? A future of conversation instead of a future of conversations that don't occur? Instead of a future of worlds without conversations? Wouldn't you rather have a conversation? Would Mark, would you like to have a conversation? Of course. Why? Monologues get boring. Monologues are boring? Even with myself. Really? <laughs> Will you keep quiet a minute? <laughs> I'm trying to have a monologue here. Are you talking to me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes I'm, I'm trying to talk to you, but I'm not succeeding, apparently. What's your problem? <laughs> My problem is, is that I am unable to avoid hubris. Humor? Humor? You've been told! I'm sorry. Didn't you see the presentation today? He said he's humorless. Humorless hubris is the best kind. Thank you this evening for attending this evening's program, a new phase of reality program called The Conversation Never Ends. The Conversation Never Ends? No, The Conversation Never Ends. Really? Does it? No. This conversation will haunt you all your days. <laughs> Thank you.